Is building a gaming PC getting too expensive is something I've been thinking about a lot recently. With the price of PC hardware skyrocketing alongside the cost of living, it's now actually a terrible time to be a gamer who just wants to build themselves a flashy new system. Or is in fact AMD's recent announcement a sign that things might just be changing and that future budget and mid-range hardware will actually start to get cheaper? In this video, I'm going to be talking about that, looking at some of the finer details of AMD's new GPU launch and talking about all of the latest components out right now. Is it all really doom and gloom or are things about to get just a little bit more affordable? Let's begin, shall we, with a bit of context as to why I wanted to make this video in the first place. I'm obviously incredibly privileged that I get to look at all this flashy new hardware and it excites me tremendously. But when I booted up the Ryzen 7000 series for the first time on a $700 X670E motherboard, I couldn't help but feel, well, a bit underwhelmed. The performance of these chips is great, but the platform costs associated aren't exactly cheap. And it's not just AMD with their CPUs, it's also Nvidia with their new GPUs, the 4080 and the 1490. Now the RTX 4090 is expensive, it was always going to be and it's not a card aimed for the mainstream gaming market. So Nvidia, I'll give you a free pass on this one. The 4080 though is a different story. As you'll have seen from our performance analysis and reviews earlier this week, the card is exceptional. DLSS 3 is great, ray tracing tech is even more mature and the clock speeds are fantastic. It's a great graphics card. But with a $1200 MSRP and that's just for the, not the reference card, but Nvidia's own design, a price that then will only go up further once Gigabyte, MSI, Asus and others add their special twist. It's not exactly cheap, especially considering the 3080 from last generation clocked in for $699. We've gone from $700 to $1,200, that's nearly double in terms of price, so actually the graphics card should be nearly twice as fast, otherwise you're actually getting less performance for your dollar, pound, euro, whatever currency you decide to use, but it's kind of besides the point. I'm I'm going to talk a little later as to why all of this stuff is quite so expensive. But first, let's have a look at AMD's announcement. Now, you've got to take their announcement with some caution. We don't know whether or not the 7900 XT and XTX are actually, well, any good yet, really, do we? I'm hoping that they will be. And based on the fact that most modern games aren't really pushing GPU demand much further than where it already is in terms of power overhead, the likelihood is it'll probably be a bit slower than the 4090, might perform on par with the 4080, and it's going to give you more than enough for a lower price point. The chances are AMD could be on to a winner with these new graphics cards. Now let's presume that is the case and that the cards are maybe not quite as good as the 4090, I hope they are, but let's say they're in the ballpark and they're acceptable for 4K gaming at high frame rates with AMD's own ray tracing and DLSS equivalent, their Fidelity FX super resolution technology. In which case their $899 and $999 price tags respectively are actually a good sign for the gaming community. Now, this is still expensive, right? I'm not going to stand here and pretend that everyone has got $1,000 to spend on a graphics card because, well, just a couple of years ago, you could build a $1,000 PC in its entirety, all seven, eight, or nine components that smashes it out the park for 1080 and 1440p gaming. But there is a problem manufacturers are going to have on their hands here that you guys are going to start benefiting from in the near term and actually are already doing so. There are loads, and I'm talking a lot, of 3060s, 6600 XTs knocking about in the market that have already fallen astronomically in price and will only keep falling. Most of AMD's modern GPU offering in the 6000 series, aside from the 6500 XT, right from the 6600 to the 6650 XT are now very affordable and in most cases sub $300, making a $1000 build very possible. And it looks like AMD's 7000 series will go the same way. To put it bluntly, AMD's software technology isn't as refined and isn't as good as Nvidia. Most people, and you look at the Steam hardware survey that backs this up, still want an Nvidia GPU in their gaming PCs. And you know what? That's completely fine. And that is why Nvidia are starting to charge a premium. But AMD coming in then as the competition with a lower price point GPU that still provides very, very acceptable performance for 1080p and 1440p can only be a good thing. So in terms of GPUs, things are obviously heading up at the high end, but there is some hope there for the mid-range and even 
budget GPU market. But what about all the other components you need? James, I need a CPU, I need some memory and a motherboard. And the new motherboards and RAM are expensive, right? Well, not so fast. Intel, of all people, believe it or not, seem to be here and fighting the consumer friendly corner when it comes to picking up an affordable CPU motherboard and RAM that provides excellent performance. Now on paper, their i5 13600K costs around about 10 or $20 more than the Ryzen 5 7600X. It's a slightly pricey i5, to be honest with you, but it performs exceptionally. Go and browse for a motherboard, however, and you'll see that the Intel lineup is providing a bit of a win for those of us looking to build a mid-range system. Not only are their new 13th gen CPUs backwards compatible with older Z690 and B660 motherboards that aside from things like overclocking support will provide identical performance, but you can even pick up one of their brand new Z790 boards for under $300 or under £300 over here in the UK. Compare that against AMD's new motherboards on the X670E lineup, which have been hindered by high component costs of the new platform, from the socket to support for new flashy DDR5 memory, and you're looking at nearly double, something which is sure to hurt AMD in the near term, as people plainly won't pay for it. Intel then, seemingly the CPU saviour, and it gets even better. Intel's latest lineup supports both DDR4 and DDR5 memory, and unless you're shopping for like the i9-13900K, which is great but expensive by the way, I would recommend just sticking with DDR4. You're going to get better performance in most instances than DDR5, at least for now as the latencies on DDR5 are still very high and it's going to cost you a lot less. But even for DDR5, the news isn't all doom and gloom. Prices are falling. You can now pick up a 32 gig expo kit of DDR5 memory for under $200. Compare that to this time last year and I was receiving RAM kits that were like $320 and weren't even performing at the level the new expo kits are. So James, what you're saying is that I should buy an AMD GPU and an Intel CPU. Um, sort of. I think what I'm actually saying is that if at the moment, until obviously we see the performance results for next gen AMD GPUs, that if you want the best of the best and you're prepared to pay for it, then sadly you're going to have to stomach the price hikes we've seen from some of Nvidia's latest releases. The performance is exceptional and to put it bluntly, Nvidia know that they're probably just going to sell these anyway. I was speaking to some people here in the UK about 4090 after it had been announced but before it was on sale and so many people told me that they didn't think it was going to sell and um it all sold out in the first day and is mostly still sold out. Now the waiting lists aren't nearly as long as they were for 30 series and we're not going to go back to GPU Armageddon of 2020 and 2021 but the point is people are prepared to pay for Nvidia's creme de la creme of GPUs in the 4090 and 4080 and AMD if they carry on with what they seem to be doing, will force Nvidia to have to compete a bit more closely when it comes to the mid-range market when they eventually launch their 4060 and 4060 Ti, if that's what they go ahead and call them. I think the point I'm really getting at here is that it is possible to build a great value PC right now. And although prices are rising in certain areas, AMD motherboards, DDR5 memory, and Nvidia's new GPUs, if you want to avoid some of these price rises, you can do. You just have to be careful with your component choices and perhaps take a little more caution to the wind than we've previously seen in the CPU, GPU, motherboard and RAM markets. So hey, it's not all doom and gloom, there is some good news after all. If you enjoyed this video, get subscribed, make sure to check out the links below for some of my favourite component recommendations right now. Thanks for tuning in though and as always, we'll see you in the next one.